Hello, my name is Jeremiah Lind and I'm a candidate for the Minnesota House this year. I was asked by a friend to speak about recent events. So many of us want to do something to help, but so little is within our power. What power has afforded me, I commit towards positive change, change that moves us closer to true and lasting equality, justice, and peace. I would like to begin by recognizing my privileges. I recognize my white privilege. I didn't understand it at first, but then it was explained to me. This privilege does not ignore or deny that white people also experience poverty, hunger, and violence, but recognizes that none of those things are the result of being white. I recognize my colonial privilege. I realize that my place and position in society is only available to me as a result of colonization and genocide. It is my privilege to exist only because of the ongoing oppression of the First People, the tribes and nations that inhabited and prospered on these continents for millennia before the arrival of Europeans. I recognize my economic privilege. Although I have known and risen from poverty, I realize that my ability to do so and gain an education, secure loans, and have children is only the result of my privilege. I am aware that so many in our region, nation, and world live without the economic stability I enjoy. I hope these privileges will allow me to use my position, my voice, and my platform to advance us towards greater understanding and the beginning of a constructive dialogue. Let whatever voice I have speak truth to power, not erasing, distorting, or diminishing these hard truths. I have watched people die. In grade school, I watched seven astronauts die on live television. Through history, I have seen the victims of Holocaust, genocide, and war. I've seen people executed by firearm, hanging, firing squad, crucifixion, and beheading. I have seen people exploding, and I have seen people falling. I have seen the lynching of the United States, and it breaks my heart. It all adds up to a heavy weight on my heart. I woke up this week and saw a man being murdered with a knee on his throat, his face crushed against the pavement. His eyes looked up at mine and asked for my help. We place our trust in the government, our leaders, and our public servants to help us. We rely on our peace officers to serve and protect us from harm, responding to danger and disaster. We expect that they do so equally fairly and without prejudice. In cases where this trust is broken, outrage will follow. We are a nation of laws united in the dream that these laws apply to us all equally and that no individual or group can defy and rise above them. The Supreme Court states it quite clearly on their building, equal justice under the law. Like our government, this principle often falls short. It fails a great many. They are perfect ideals carried out by imperfect individuals and our failures lead to oppression, violence, and death. No one should be above the law, not the rich, the powerful, or the connected, not the police, the military, or even the president. No one. A nation absent of laws will inevitably collapse into anarchy. People are furious because if any other person had murdered George Floyd, they would have been arrested right then. People are outraged because this is not the first time. Eric Garner, Michael Brown, Philando Castile, Tamir Rice, and so many more, an ever-growing list of those robbed of their lives. Of course people will take to the streets. Of course people will rage. This is not freedom, equality, or justice. It is an affront to those principles. In the absence of justice, there can be no peace. That I took a week of burning, killing, pain, and destruction before a single arrest took place is a disaster beyond comprehension. People are dead, traumatized, injured, unemployed, and desperate. This issue is pervasive, intersectional, and institutional. Institutional violence and white supremacy are very real and ongoing forces that act against the indigenous of our nation and in our region, the tribes of Red Lake, Leech Lake, and White Earth face the ongoing and undue burdens of violence, racism, and genocide. Missing and murdered indigenous women remain the constant victims of our inaction. The status quo is to ignore and diminish these problems, and I believe that that standard must be destroyed. We can do better. We must do better. We must recognize these problems to have any hope of solving them. There are no easy answers or sure solutions. I have ideas, but this is neither the right time nor the place to share them. Planning during anarchy diminishes the complexity of the issues, the gravity of the situation, and the grief of those yet mourning. The road is hard and long, and I do not know when or where it will end. The dream of true equality is a torch that has been passed from generation to generation with the hope it would one day be realized. Heroes have held that torch aloft in truth, love, and power. 
They have turned that light towards injustice, intolerance, and hate. Beyond their passing from this earth, their truth burns still. It demands our attention, our respect, and our action. It leads us towards unity, compassion, and tolerance. It urges us to our words, our organizing, and our glorious purpose as our chief tools. It begs us to turn away from violence, chaos, and despair. Let those be the weapons of our oppressors, and let us remain united against their defeat. I am in this fight with you, to the end. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Thank you.